Hello, I'm Trey and welcome back to part two of my tutorial on a fairy design from Fairies and Friends, uh, an issue of magazine by Colleen Haven. Lovely artwork by Meredith Dillman. Part one, I uh, went through colour and skin and today I'm going to attempt to do the eyes, uh, mouth, toenails and then work on the hair. Now I keep notes of the colours the originally uh, I picked because I'm working on a limited colour palette and uh, I'm now going to be working with blues and the reds for now. Um, so for the mouth, it's just going to be quite simple because it's only a little, um, little one. So I'm just going to use the skin tone that was used, you know, obviously for the skin, the lighter areas. I'm never quite sure what to do with lips, so I tend to just highlight a little bit around the edges. at the corners. If you have a bigger mouth you can do, you know, better lips but I tend to be quite frugal really. Let me just do a little bit underneath there. And that's so just kind of like frame the mouth. Nothing special. I'm going to keep using this red and just colour in the, the small toenails as well. Again, they're not very big, but Nice to have a little bit of detail in there. So a section's done. Didn't take long. Now I want to focus on her eyes and her hair, which I'm going to be doing the same colour. I'm going to do the hair and her eyes the same colour and I've chosen the blue tones. Now for her eyes there is a, a lighter section. So I'm going to keep that lighter section in to give it a highlight. I'm going to colour the all of the high in like a pale blue colour and leaving the little highlight that's already been included in the design. Now I'm going to go around the top of the eye and round the edge of the iris in a dark blue. The middle bit there, I believe, should be black. I'm going to do in very dark blue. It's not quite as dark. I'll go over again in the light blue. Just give the impression of a two-toned coloured. 
Đấy. And again with the dark. And that's the eyes. Now I'm going to work on her hair. And as with everything, I tend to do my highlights first. Where the light, I think, might hit. Now, the curved sections of hair, I tend to, for the outer bit part of the hair, I try to do the highlights there. Well, those are bent inwards rather than outwards, so they'll be darker. There's a little bit here, where I believe will be lighter. The parts on top of the hair here. And this again, it's just rough. Uh, so I can change it later on or to light layers at this point. So this bit here, I think, will be lighter. Another one here. If anything that curls upwards and it isn't at the back. And that strands underneath. I think I'll make this one lighter. Some hairstyles are easier to work out than others. This one a little bit more difficult. Bent, bent that way. So I'm going to put some highlights here. Not too far. Nothing underneath here. Just to give it a little bit more interest. And there we go. Now when I do hair, I like to do my next darkest, next layer in the dark one so that I know where my dark parts are going to be for the hair. So I'm going to put those in at the roots. And again, it's just light. And to do the tips of my hair in the dark shade. In the back of there, it will be quite dark as well. Going to put dark in there. Same behind her head. I'll be careful here because got, she's got a hearing in, so I don't want to be colouring that.
now I'm going to fill in the gaps between the light and the dark with a medium blue. Gives it a gradient effect. And again with light layers. If your lightest colour is too light and you're not 100% sure where you, it is, just go over it again to make sure you haven't, you know, you don't go over those parts. That helps a bit. <laughs> I tend to be more um, feathered and not quite as precise when I'm doing hair and in the layers because the colours would run into each other. Now again, that's a rough uh, first layer, and I will go over those again, adjusting as I go along where I feel it should be darker or lighter. Now with hair, I like to do more of a gradient effect, and as I'm putting in the lighter and darker areas, sometimes I'm not overly happy with how dark the dark is, so I'm going to feather the darker sections out a bit more with my medium blue just to soften those and also overlap them into the lighter areas now how many layers you wish to put on this is personal choice I mean, I've put two on so far. I'll probably put another couple on. It's just adjusting the colours and how they overlap as I go along. I tend to do long strokes like this so that the colours kind of mix in together. You know, you, you see some of the other colours underneath. Because uh, even though it's blue hair, uh, hair naturally is multicoloured.
Like I think there should be darker pieces. I'll just put those in as well. There's strands here I think might be underneath. And we'll darken those in. And of course they'll reflect the lighter colour underneath. This would interest in your know, colour in the end. Do some of the lighter highlights again. Now I think I'll try and do a, a light blend at this point. I'm going to use a blender pencil to blend this time. I want to blend these overlapping layers together. I'm going to work on the darkest first and just blend them slightly towards the light. Uh, I'll do the light sections separately. It, it, this is just light pressure, I don't want to burnish at this point. Now I'll just blend over the lighter sections. I feel there's a little bit more of the medium blue to go on here before I do the last layer. Just to lighten up these dark areas. Right, that looks more even and I've decided for the last layer to blend, instead of using the blending pencil I'm going to use my lightest blue and go over all of the hair. I'm going to put more of a medium pressure on now so it will slightly burnish the paper more.
Right. When I cut in normally, I move the page around, but unfortunately I can't do that on camera, so I'll finish that off, off camera. Um, if you're interested in how I do gradients and uh, blending, I do have other videos, tutorials on the channel, so please do check those out. Because I'm working on a limited palette, I have to think about where I want to put other colours. I've decided that the poppies and the dress will be the same colours of red. So I'm going to do part of the green sections now. I think the wing should be green. The leaves and ribbons on her legs should be green. Of course, these stems, green. And the middle of this flower which is probably not the colour it would normally be. But obviously when you work on a limited palette, you have to think about that. I'm going to do a jewels as well in green. I'm only going to do part of those for this part of the tutorial. Um, and I'm going to work on the wings and a little bit of jewellery that she's wearing. Again, as always, I tend to do the lighter sections first. And do all of the leaves in light. Add my shadows later. And the wings, um, now these sections are a little bit behind the hair, mostly the wings. So I'm going to do the outsides of the wings light. That's a light layer at this point, no, not heavy. A light section here. Now I'll put my next medium green. I'm just going to put little bits of dark. I want to Try and make that look a little bit 3D. So I'm going to be darkening it up from the bottom of these circular sections. I'm going to treat the earring as if it was a leaf and just darken from the edge. Sleeves I'm going to do in the middle out a little bit. And same with the other one. So it's going to end up darker in the middle and light on the edges. The jewellery, I'm going to make that darker in there. Change my mind for that. And I'm going to just darken it up from the edges and the bands. They're both lighter. Same with this side. Down for the edges. Now I'm going to do those there darker because they're kind of in the shadow. Can't see them very well. Now for the wings, I'm just going to do light strokes going from the inside of the wing towards the edge. So 
I want it to have like a gradient effect. A little bit there, this little corner. Right, now I'll get my darker pencil and for the jewels I'm just going to do the, the very end edges and the, just the middle of the leaf to darken that. Earring, just the very edges, the end bit. Um, I'm going to go around that with the darker, a bit of a shadow, and just the edges of the bands. It gives it almost like a rounded effect. Wings, just feathering into the medium green. Same with this one. Now to darken that green a little bit more, I'm going to use a dark blue. I'm just going to go for the edge rose. See how that's giving it a bit more of a shadow? Right, um, edges of the leaf. Now I've missed that edge there, so I need to come in with the two greens. Just that. Come with blue. You don't feel like you've extended one of the layers enough. You just adapt as you're going along. Now I'm going to add streaks of blue. The wing. These metal sections need to extend that medium green. And I'm going to change those to those slightly as well. Over that layer of green, darken it up. And then I'll go back to this section here. Over the lighter sections with my wings and the lightest green, overlapping the medium green section.
I'm just going to try a light blend at this point and see how these colours are working together. I may need another couple of layers yet, but let's see how it works. Right, now I think it's the wings that's going to need more, but I'll see how it works. Yeah, the wings need more layers, so I will do that. I put a, a couple more layers on the wings because I wasn't happy with those. Now I'm going to go over with my lightest green over all of the wings, just like I did with the hair. The lighter green will darken up, but it will be a nice gradient effect. There you are. Now that's the end of uh, part two of this tutorial. I try to keep them reasonably short because I, you know, I'm thinking about the view and time. And so next time we'll finish off the green and work on the dress and the poppies.